You can clap if you can breathe. <laughs> I wish I could see you all better. Um, there's a set of keys on this. <laughs> Classy. Um, the slideshow you just saw was um, designed by his loving sister, Elizabeth Carlson. So please give her a round of applause. <laughs> I don't want to be here. I know you don't either. The last eight weeks have been one of the hardest times of my life. And impossible for his family, who I will introduce in just a moment. And really difficult for all of you. I know that. Because he was unparalleled. He broke the mold. There will never be another Jeffrey Carlson or the likes of him. And we were all so blessed to know him. You know that. I know that. I've never loved anyone the way I loved him. And I never will. However, OK, so honestly, you know, <laughs> the family had to do the Long Beach thing. And we were all collecting photos and all that stuff. And then Kate McDuffie and I were like, well, we got to do something in Chicago. We're, you know, we just should. And um, in my initial conversation with her, I actually said, um, OK, th that's fine. You know, we'll do it for the students. And then, you know, and then it's fit that they want to come, the family wants to come. Um, but you know, let's try to keep away from doing any kind of show. <laughs> <laughs> Wait until you see the way we're celebrating him tonight. <laughs> Because it's what he would fucking want. Pardon my friend. He wants the show. We're going to do it, OK? So as horribly grieving as we all are, we are here to celebrate the amazing Jeffrey Carlson. And I'm so glad you are here. So welcome. By the way, just a little commercial. The bar will be open through the entire ceremony. <laughs> you can bring food into the theater. Um, and um, the bar will be open after the ceremony. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I didn't mean to dodge a lot of you before when you arrived, but I just kind of knew my legs would not hold me up if I hugged all of you as you entered the building. So plus, I had to put my face on. So you know, there's that. Um, there, I guess before I, we really launch the evening, um, I really, uh, Darnell, can we turn the house lights up for just a moment? Because I want to introduce Jeffrey's family. And I want to thank Darnell in the booth, who's like our, our amazing technician. Yeah, we're not doing a show. We don't need Darnell. No, no. Um, may I please kindly introduce Susan and Steve Carlson. If you guys, could you, can you stand, Suze? These are Jeffrey's parents. Stand up. Stand up. And holding her mother up, holding her mother up at this time is Elizabeth Carlson, Jeffrey's baby sister. And next to her, her eldest son, Blake Edwards, um, Jeffrey's nephew, for God's sake. You may be seated because we have a little surprise for all of you. Um, Beth, you want to bring the baby up? Oh. 
Make way for Beth coming through with the baby. This is Aspen, Jeffrey's dog. She's gonna do a twirl around the stage in her outfit. Do you see the tutu? That's his baby. Many of you were in class with us, I think a few of you, probably at least a dozen of you, when Jeffrey arrived from the airport with Aspen in the bag and we all saw her for the first time. <laughs> the size of a Coke can. The size of a Coke can, that's right. Yeah, she was the size of a Coke can. They sent up for the, the original people that raised her or uh, birthed her or whatever they do. <laughs> um, I'm not, I'm gonna be a mess tonight, so just you know, put up with all of it. Um, uh, the other thing I want to mention is that Darnell, house lights for two more seconds. Many of you flew in from around the country, and those of you that did, would you please stand up so we can applaud you, please? Get up. lame, I don't know, hopefully okay, homage uh, my, of my own later. Um, we have a lot of entertainment for you. Um, grab your Kleenex, I'm warning you right now, but um, an army of folks are helping us put on our non-show tonight, um, volunteered their time, and uh, we're very grateful, and you will reap the benefits of um, all of their talent as the evening goes on. Um, so, um, to start us off, I would like to welcome um, Elizabeth Gingras, Jeffrey's sister, followed by his nephew, Blake Edwards, to um, talk about Jeffrey, brother and uncle. Thanks. Good at this. There's only one in the family. <laughs> he got it all. Like, and if you saw his artwork out there, the Phantom of the Opera, he hand drew that on the table. He had so many talents. And, um, I'm an introvert. <laughs> this is hard for me, but I would, I'll do anything for him. So. I'm gonna read off my phone and I, I won't have the eye contact and I won't do any of what I'm supposed to do because it's just not, I can't. Um, let me just start because I'm just gonna read it. <clears throat> Hello everyone, my name is Elizabeth and I am Jeffrey's sister. I want to first, first of all express our family's appreciation and gratitude towards each and every one of you that came here tonight to celebrate and show your love for him. You have no idea what it means to us to see each of you who we know he cherished so much. He spoke about his work, his students, his mentors, and his friends with such pride and dedication. The smile on his face while talking about Teaching and acting is the smile I see when I think of him every day. Him in his happiest moments. I hope you all know how special you were to him and are to us as well. We thank you for being such a light in his life. Jeffrey was such a bright light in our family. When he was home, it brought closeness. That is something I will cherish always and miss terribly. His laughter and love, 
his willingness to listen and respond. His talent that never went unseen and we always crave to see and enjoy is irreplaceable. Being his little sister has been such a blessing. I don't remember a day growing up when he made me feel anything other than a best friend to him and someone he loved dearly and would protect with all that he was. We confided in each other with zero judgment and nothing but love and support. He wanted so badly to sweep me away and put me in his pocket to experience and see everything he was doing and wanted to bring that joy to me as well. His determination and passion at such a young age is something I hope to instill in my own children and is something that is uncommon and special. His presence was powerful that we will forever miss the passionate, intelligent, beautiful man he was. Sorry, so close. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many memories that keep that I keep close in my heart. Not only was he an incredible actor and teacher, he was a fiercely loving uncle, son, brother, grandson, and friend. He was the first and last to say, I love you and I miss you. He was the first and last to wrap you in a hug and a kiss. He was the first and last to tell you he missed you. What I wouldn't get to hear Jeffrey tell me. He loved me one more time. Or entertain my stories of being a stay-at-home mom and having a rough day. To hear him tell me I'm doing an amazing job and he can't wait to show me all of his world when I'm ready. He has definitely shown me his world the last couple months, but I wasn't ready. And I was hoping that he'd be with me when I got to experience the love and talent and beautiful, amazing people. I was hoping to stand by him and show him how proud I was to meet you all and how proud I was to be the sister of such an incredible human. Our family losing Jeffrey is like our family using its, losing its wings to fly. The pain is crippling. But if he could say one thing to us, I know he would tell us to live. Don't be boring. <laughs> <laughs> and don't be sad. And that he loves us so very much. We must not have regrets, as he wouldn't want any of our minds to be consumed with such thoughts. He would want celebration and love. He would want everything and everyone in this room to be enjoying each other in his memory. And I know for a fact his heart would be maxed out to the fullest. This beautiful theater filled with beautiful people brings comfort knowing, knowing each of you found something in Jeffrey worth being here to celebrate his life. He has touched each of us in his own way and we should all cling to the memory of him that brought us here today. Thank you so much to all that made the celebration happen. Your efforts have not gone unnoticed and we are extremely grateful for taking the time out of your busy lives to help us send Jeffrey off in all of his glory. We love you so very much, Jeffrey. I'll see you in my dreams. And until we meet again, good night, my sweet friends.
Y'all can hear me, right? Yes. Perfect. Good evening, everyone. I want to take a moment to thank everyone here for coming out to celebrate my kind, loving, and incredibly talented uncle, uh, Jeffrey Carlson. My name is Blake, and I'm Jeffrey's unbelievably proud nephew. <laughs> and someone who looked up to him very much. My Uncle Jeff was truly a role model for me. I looked up to his prowess and passion in so many ways, but I wasn't really aware of the extent of the ultra-famous, stage-dominating Jeff <laughs> that the world knew. I really only knew my Uncle Jeffy, a person who was easier than anyone to talk to and had a mind almost just like mine. <laughs> a man who was loved by so many, but also showed that love and kindness right back to his family and those close to him. When he was in town, I was excited as ever to see him, every single time. And I always had stories to share with him when the time would come. I loved conversing with my Uncle Jeff about all the things that, inter that interested me, which just so happened the, to be the things that we both like to talk about. The book I had been reading, whether I enjoyed it and was hoping for a sequel, or I skimmed it as fast as possible to get over the boring plot. <laughs> How school was going for me at the time, and what new songs I'd learned on the guitar. I would go run and grab the 12 string from the center of the stairwell of Nana and Papa's house, and play whatever song I was so proud of myself for learning. And Uncle Jeff seemed always just as interested as I was. I remember vividly sitting at the piano in the downstairs room trying to navigate the keys on my own, pretending to have a clue where middle C was, <laughs> and I noticed someone sit beside me on the piano bench. I was not the most coachable person, I will admit, but for a couple hours, Uncle Jeff taught me every basic chord, the main major and minor skills, and by the end of our lesson, we were jamming to heart and soul together, <laughs> switching off, playing the main two parts. Not only was my uncle a patient soul, he had a great sense of humor, and it always meant fun when Uncle Jeff was in town. He would always join my sister Avery, my brother Jameson, and I in the water on our bay days, and he never ever hesitated to spend time playing with Jameson when the rest of us were all burnt out playing with him. <laughs> my beloved uncle, Jeffrey Carlson, meant so much to me, and I know he also did to so many of you in this room through family, friends, and career. He impacted so many lives. I will love you and miss you forever, Uncle Jeff, and I know you're resting easy now and that I'll see you again. I didn't have me introing the song. Uh, this, I didn't, but that's okay. This is a song from Cymbeline, ah, three, featuring three lovely singers um, with the lyrics from the play Cymbeline by William Shakespeare, Fear No More, The Heat of the Sun. Oh. 
Um, please welcome, in this order, Jill Williams and Jessica King. Thank you uh, to Jeff's family and friends, Susan and Kate and everybody who made this day possible. Thank you. Um, my name is Jill. I was Jeffrey's friend. Jeff. Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. I am gutted. 
I cannot bear losing you. Your magnificent smile, your impish giggle, <laughs> your dazzling eyes. It's fitting today that I have come to say goodbye on September 11th. We spent that day together, walking up Broadway, then Amsterdam Avenue, all the way up the Upper West Side until we found a Puerto Rican restaurant so we could sit and have a margarita. Because what else do you do on that day? My best friend. I struggle to sum our, or explain our relationship, our friendship. I can't. A lot of you know why I can't, because a lot of you in this room were also Jeffrey's best friend. <laughs> We are all Jeffrey's best friend. He had a light and an ability to shower you with his love. You were the only person in the room when Jeffrey was with you. We are all Jeffrey's best friend. And I thank you all for being here to share in that. I am alone here today. I was always Jeffrey's plus one. He was always my plus one. When we needed a friend, we were each other's plus one. When we lived in New York City, we would go to parties, openings, bashes, birthdays, the Tonys, we were each other's date, even when we had actual dates or boyfriends. <laughs> we were always each other's date. I was Joey's mommy when Jeff traveled. He was my person. I do not understand why you are gone, Jeffrey. I simply cannot understand that you are gone. But I know that you left an indelible print on all who met you and all who knew you. Anyone who saw you on stage, anyone who got to volley with you on stage, anyone who had the pleasure of sitting down and talking about Shakespeare or theater or life, you had the pleasure of knowing Jeffrey and we had the pleasure of knowing you. Jeffrey and I used to write notes to each other. We used to send each other voicemails. I'm sure you all got those. He would send himself singing a song in a video, and then I was supposed to send a video back of me singing the other part of the song. <laughs> we wrote each other poems, sometimes silly, stupid poems that made no sense. So on the day after I found out that Jeffrey had passed, I sat down and I wrote a poem of which I will share with you all. I imagine he would giggle at my writing. <laughs> he would encourage me. He would praise me. He would give me a few notes. <laughs> He would giggle some more, and then he would hug me. My friend, oh, how my heart breaks each day a little more to lose you. Every laugh shared, every tear shed. Your essence lingers, an echo that won't fade. Though we yearn for moments unfulfilled, your light shall guide me through life's charade. Farewell, dear friend, your spirit etched in my soul. As we treasure the chapters we penned together, though you've journeyed beyond this mortal realm, your presence remains cherished forever. Goodbye, Jeff.
your words. <laughs> <laughs> My 30-year friendship with Jeffrey Carlson began with him standing just inside the doorway of the green room at UC Davis. Tall, blonde, shy, yet pulled by invisible threads towards his destiny. I, sprawled across a dingy chair that once was green, asked, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey Carlson, he said. And so our dance began. And this last decade together, we added the decidedly delicious layer of student and teacher. Shortly after moving to Chicago, I ran into Jeffrey outside the Goodman Theater. Uh, he was working on a play inside. I was working outside the sidewalk canvassing for Greenpeace. <laughs> <laughs> The searching way he looked into me instantly validated the churning feeling inside me that perhaps I should start making different life choices. <laughs> <laughs> so he had that gift, right? <laughs> like to help you dig deeper into your own truth with one very possibly withering. <laughs> <laughs> So I called him later and I said, All right, what's the best acting class in Chicago that I need to be taking? Mine. <laughs> okay. Okay. I said. And the dance continued. Uh, Jeffrey possessed so, so many gifts as a human being, an actor, a friend, a lover, son, a brother, and an uncle that were magnified as a teacher. I mean, the gift of being fully present with you wherever you happen to be with him, on stage or playing dinosaurs, you know, his enormous capacity for li listening, right? sitting next to you at Lady Greg's or thousands of miles away over the phone. His, his true empathy in your sorrows and his utter delight in your joys. His glorious giggle when life presented its ridiculousness. Um, like the time he and I ran into an older couple on the streets of Manhattan and well, you know, one of the gentlemen said something very lascivious uh, to my friend and to which I replied, you shut up, you dirty old man. And, uh, as we were walking away, uh, Jeffrey, in a mild state of shock, said, Jessica, do you know who that was? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no. Oh. <laughs> he said, that was Ed Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Extraordinary teacher. Um, he, he had this, this uncanny ability to see and unlock the potential inside of you. you know, all the parts that sometimes we are afraid of, that we, we don't quite believe in. You know, our beauty, our strength, our fears, our joys, and our sorrows. He pulled right out and extended his hand an invitation to dance, to savor, to mourn, to relish the word, to hit your verbs, to dig deep and then deeper still. He coaxed performances out of us we did not believe ourselves capable of, and so proud of you afterwards, you felt like you could grow wings, right?
I've been thinking a lot about light these last two months now, and the sudden absence of it. A magnificent, so, so bright light of Jeffrey Carlson, and how to navigate in the world without it. I would like to share a text exchange with you <laughs> of uh, two veteran dance partners. Jeffrey texted, I was thinking about your pop and my brother. One only has one chance at this game of life. You gotta go fighting. I love you. To which I replied, Rage against the dying of the light, eh, old boy? <laughs> Question mark. Rage against the dying of the light, indeed. For the only way I know how to navigate through my one chance at this game of life is to wrap myself in the gift that was Jeffrey's light and shine all the brighter. to introduce to you Jeffrey's classmate from Juilliard and actor extraordinaire here with some Juilliard fun for you all, Mr. Michael Milligan. <laughs> I saw Jeff was at Juilliard orientation in a room of a hundred people or so he stood out like some Greek demigod <laughs> <laughs> the most handsome person that I had ever seen <laughs> his bright blonde disheveled mop, mop of hair like a flaming halo, <laughs> kissed by flying too close to the sun, like Phaeton. <laughs> Over time, I would learn that he had an inward beauty that miraculously surpassed those perfect cheekbones. <laughs> we ended up being paired a lot on stage and in class. Benedict and Claudio, fellow students in Brecht's The Tutor, The Normal Heart, The Memorandum, and most memorably for me, the Mahabharata as Lord Krishna and Prince Arjuna, making myth together, performing the divine dialogue of the Bhagavad Gita. We've continued that scene work ever since which has definitely deepened over the last year and a half, adding to the repertoire, the extended director's cut of Night of the Iguana. <laughs> <laughs> and the odd couple. <laughs> Dramatic and deeply felt, as I'm sure you can imagine, but also filled with irony and laughter to leaven the melodramatic intensity. This was a miraculous gift of Jeff's to be able to go from the deepest, most intense drama to high comedy in a flash, something that he undoubtedly picked up from his long love of Chekhov. <laughs> of all the performances that Jeff gave at Juilliard, the strongest impression that I was left with was a song that he sang 
in voice class. He worked on it all year, our second year. It was a song called I'd Rather Be Sailing from the musical A New Brain. And when he sang that song, it seemed like the words sprang from the heart of his heart. I'm not going to sing that song. (laughs) Not my gift, but um, I, I would like to read just a passage from it. I'd rather be sailing, yes, I would, on an open sea. I'd stand at the railing if I could, feeling wild and free. The sun is on my neck, the wind is in my face, the water's incredibly blue. And I'd rather be sailing, yes, I'd want to go sail, and then come home to you. My dear friend, may your soul find its freedom and bliss on that open sea and know that you will always have a home in the hearts of those who knew you and loved you. I could try to describe what Jeff was like at Juilliard, his incredible passion, his idealism, his ambition, his elegant authenticity his self-effacing self-awareness, the velocity with which his furrowed brow gave way to peals of laughter. But instead, I want you to see for yourselves. During our third year, strangely, PBS filmed a two-hour episode of the program American Masters about what it was like to be a student at Juilliard. And Jeff was the representative drama student. (laughs) So here he is in the glory of his early, mid-20s, talking about the things that he loved, acting, the theater, and his mom. Gracious Lord, I may be negligent, foolish, and fearful. In every one of these, no man is free. I started thinking about wanting to become an actor when I was 11. Just as a little kid, I was fascinated by words. I was fascinated by the interaction with someone else, some sort of freedom. And I didn't want to think at all that it was a pipe dream. I wanted it to be a, a very real dream that could happen. Decision. You get in here because they think that you have potential and you have something. And you, everyone's fighting to be, if you really love it, you're fighting to, and again, this isn't like, it's not, am I good, am I good, it's not that. You just want, you want to be able to move things. No, it's not. You want to be able to do something with what you've got. Your acts of violence are always curiously disgusting. What do you mean? I mean, they're not clean. You're always in a drunken stupor when you commit them, and then you either beat Matilda, or you hit me, or you throw your son up against the wall. <coughs> and then you start apologizing and groveling. Well, I, I, I don't mean to hurt people. Well, then don't. And if you do, do it coolly and without remorse. Here, I, I, I have every, every reason to be an artist. And it's a hard thing to remember. It's a real hard thing to remember. Because insecurities can be at full force inside of this building because of the expectations you put on yourself. Oh, yes. Well, and you... that, that are on you. Because you want to be great. Right. Hamlet Act 3, Scene 4. Mm-hmm. Mother! 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 Withdraw, I hear him coming. Now, Mother, what's the matter? Hamlet. Thou hast thy father much offended. Mother, you have my father much offended. Come, come, you speak with an idle tongue. Go, go, you question with a wicked tongue. If thou canst mutine in a matron's bones. He says he'll kill him in his sleep. He'll kill him in some act with his mother. No, 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 no. He said he'll kill him in his sleep. He'll do anything but uh, after his, him praying, so he'll go to, so he won't go to heaven. Sure. So who are you killing? The king. 
That you didn't just a minute ago? No, but now I did. Ha ha. <laughs> then what did what? Just making it much more complicated than it. You are making it complicated. Yes, I'm, I'm making it. I'm I'm making I told it you I'm clear. trying to be simple. Right. That I'm not. Right. Ever. You got to start simple. I haven't discussed psychology yet. I haven't discussed. Yeah. You know whether I'm you're just exhausted. Mother, Absolutely exhausted. Can't you see the bags under my eyes and the paleness of my skin? I don't know. That I'm emotionally drained. Now, I'm tired, and I call my mom, and you think, you know, your mom will understand. I say I'm tired, and she's like, we're all tired, and I'm like, yeah, thanks. And I'm like, I, I know, but I'm like, no one knows what it's like to go through this program except for people that have been in it. <laughs> A noisy noise, a 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 noise, I absolutely have, I've never ever questioned the choice to be an actor. I just have to keep reminding myself how lucky I am. And I have to keep track of what's important, that the work is important. In terms of projects, I'm really looking forward to Much Ado About Nothing. Really excited. I would like to play Claudio. I think that's something that, that I would be cast as in the real world. So, I mean, outside of here. But my only thing is I'm like, this is our third year, man. It's our third year. So it's different. It's different. It feels more important. It feels like time, the little time clock is ticking. played a soldier before. Oh my god. I guess I better start working out. First time. <laughs> this is the first time. It's surprising, isn't it? I know. I'm like, For Jeff and I, like, I, this is the first time since my first year. And let's hope it doesn't change. <laughs> first year. We can do a roll now. No, no, we get to do it. I cut that together for you all from the original documentary. Are we done yet? <laughs> Little ways to go. I just want to cry. Um, okay. Who cares about me? Not about me. About him. <laughs> um, so. Next up, we're gonna go a little Shakespearean uh, because we know that Jeffrey loved the playwright so much. Um, and um, uh, about during COVID, right, Kate? Mm -hmm. Right, tail end of COVID. We were doing a Love's Labor's Lost class. Was it? Yeah, yeah. right? And um, one of our, the students in the class volunteered to literally lift um, the vocal arrangement from the Royal Shakespeare Company, more on that later, uh, uh, that I just fell in love with. And it's about, you know, the impossibility of love and the inevitability of love lasting forever. Um, and so I asked them to share that song with you all tonight because our love for him will last forever. And it felt like an appropriate, uplifting thing. So lots of smiles, kids, okay? <laughs> um, f immediately following that, we have the amazing Laura Rook and LaShawn Banks visiting us from their gig up at American Players Theater in Wisconsin. They are Chicago actors and former students of Jeffries to share a sonnet with you. So please welcome the singers and Laura and LaShawn.
Eternal love, and so this was the first thing that came to mind. Do you want to say? I do. I, say I, didn't, so. I did something. I didn't know. I didn't. It's. Uh, this is all hitting hit, hitting me today because you know, I'm I'm just slow. Uh, so, <laughs> but I just very very quickly I remember. <laughs> Jeffrey and I had I had the amazing opportunity to play opposite Jeffrey in um, a production of Edward II over at Chicago Shakespeare, and I was terrified. And this was, gosh, what, 15 years ago? 
so crazy, and I haven't changed a bit. <laughs> but I was terrified, and I, I remember, and that process was a process. It was, it was insane in membrane, but I remember Jeffrey being, I had, to play his, I had to play his lover in that play, and I remember being him being in a, one of the, like in a pit or something. I was so scared, I didn't know what, I didn't know, I had nothing, I had nothing, I had nothing I have now. And I remember him all, and I remember he just said, I'm looking down at him in this pit, and he just said, just commit. And I, that's what I do now. And um, I've learned so much from Jeffrey. I, it, was, it was everything when he was proud of us in class, when he was just the joy, just watching us get it, and the love that he had of these plays and these words and these texts. And um, I hope... I hope that he'd be proud of the work I do now, the work that we do now, that all of us do, any of us do now. Um, and so, Jeffrey. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, the summer's lease hath all too short a date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dim. And every fair from fair sometime declines, by chance or nature's changing course, untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest. Nor shall death brag Thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines of time thou growest. So long as men can breathe or eyes can see. So long lives this, and this gives life to thee. felt so strongly um, about doing this evening was um, a lot of you met him, uh, you know, in the last 12 years. And when I met him, 2006, never mind, I won't do the whole, ah, oh, 2006. Remember, yes, I will, I'll do it later. Um, but, uh, so we met, we did a, a gig together. And then he got a call. So let me finish the story. Part of the reason, I just want you guys to have a chance to revel in some stuff you may have never seen before, the Juilliard stuff, the, the clips that you're about to see, the <laughs> clips of his Prince Hal coming up. And um, uh, so, 06, Jeffrey got a call from his agent saying, ABC wants you as a day player on All My Children. And, um, Jeffrey called and said, oh, I mean, you know, I'll make a couple hundred bucks. It'll be nice. And I was like, yeah, awesome. He's like, I'm a petulant rock star. And I was like, perfect. <laughs> and uh, so he did that one episode. And about two months later, the show wants him back. Because the audience wanted more of that, of course, super interesting petulant rock star. But there was a catch. I'm going to cry. Oh, God, I promised myself I would. It's all right. You guys don't care. Um, it wasn't a catch. It was an addition. And what ABC was interested in doing was Jeffrey embodying the first transgender character on daytime television. And for the next seven months, he was so devoted to that role. The character's name was Zarf, petulant rock star, who transitioned to Zoe over the course of those months. And 
Jeffrey did such a huge service to the trans community. And he cared so much about representing them with love and consideration and respect. And can you believe how timely that is even today, people? I mean, come on. Uh, so um, we're going to show you a couple of clips. Um, the rock star side of him. And then an amazing clip where ABC um, asked Jeffrey if he would play Zoe while improvising with the people from GLAAD, real people. And we have that clip for you tonight, and I'm very excited for you to see it. Those two clips will be followed. Oh, I don't want to leave this out, though. You know, he would call me almost every night and say, do you want to hear the garbage I have to do next week and read the scripts to me? <laughs> I mean, there was, there was one line where he was like, not the satin slayer. <laughs> the satin slayer's back. Not the satin slayer. And I was like, how are you gonna fucking do that? <laughs> oh my God. And then I'd watch the episode two weeks later and be like, he was brilliant. <laughs> he turned shit into gold. <laughs> Amazing. The two All My Children clips will be followed by a, um, a dedication from Jen Richards, who some of you may or may not know, Hollywood actress, and I think it will be uh, beautiful for you guys to experience the next 10 minutes with these clips and with that video. So enjoy.
Missouri. Holy, you're Zarf. Everyone knows you. No, everyone knows the wrong me. But I'm here to be who I truly am. I thought you were just another celebrity looking for publicity. But you're here. Do you mean it? Hi, I'm David. Um, I started my transition 14 years ago, and uh, it's uh, lovely to be back and uh, have some new people in the group. My name is Zoe, and this is all very new to me. Uh, I just recently came out as a woman, and I'm scared to death and have a million questions. You know, Zoe, we have to ask you, you know, as, as Sarf, if you don't mind my using that name, you, you, you know, people know you as this very kind of in-your-face um, person. And do you see yourself? Do, well, <laughs> I think people do love that about you. But do you see yourself being a very different kind of person as a woman? To be honest, invented myself, the accent, the, the, the clothing, the, I mean, some of it's me. But I invented this person as a defense mechanism. Just be yourself, like explore and be willing to explore and love yourself because you'll, you'll ultimately be the one who have to love with yourself. <laughs> Do you feel that you're not lovable? Oh, no. Are you kidding? <laughs> no, why? I love you. Why? No, <laughs> well, you love everyone. <laughs> well, why, why should you not be lovable? Oh, I, oh, I don't. You know, I think you have uh, certain events happen in your life that um, if you feel unloved, why would you allow that um, the risk of, of that breaking worse. ever again, you know, making it worse? Um, my father and I did not have a good relationship. Um, I was, oh, I took something of my mother's that I loved and dressed up and Daddy came home and had such an aggressive reaction to it, where he basically ripped off my clothes, threw me in front of the mirror, and said, "You're a boy, damn it." Um, and I think that did something inside that uh, made me not allowed to really return until this very moment, or a few unsuccessful attempts in the recent past. What about you, Zoe? Do you have someone who really understands you? I don't think I'd be in this room if I didn't. Um, because I was literally dragged down the hallway. <laughs> um, and she's right outside those doors. She's been with me, she took me to the endocrinologist, she, which is why I'm here. Um, love is why I came out, and love is why I tried to run back in. It's funny, we were talking earlier about whether love can save us. Some of us wanted love to make us not who we were. But in the end, maybe it's love that can help us become who we are. I hope that's true for you. I hope it's true for all of us. Because I hope it's true for all of us. Okay. For the first time in my life, I know I'm not alone. Hi, I'm Jen Richards. I'm a writer and actor in Hollywood and a longtime student of Jeffrey and Susan's. And I'm so sorry I can't be there with you today, but I wanted to share a couple thoughts about Jeffrey um, as an actor and as a person and on the outsized impact he's had on my life, um, maybe in ways in which he didn't even know. Uh, I think all of you there know what a force Jeffrey is as an actor, and I think the actors in the room will particularly appreciate that he was a once-in-a-generation talent, someone who could marry just a superlative level of technical 
craft and skill and knowledge of body and voice and text along with a raw visceral palpable present a direct emotional truth and engagement with the text and the character and with the audience that combined made for something that was truly magnificent to behold that was transcendent that was at times so real that i had to look away because i felt like i was actually spying on hamlet a character created hundreds of years ago speaking words crafted a hundred years ago i felt like i was watching a man and the throes of genuine spiritual agony such was jeffrey's power as an actor and if I had only encountered him in that respect alone, it would have forever changed my sense of what is possible for an actor to achieve, what this craft is capable of doing um, for the art and for audiences. But it goes far deeper than that. Um, I started studying with Jeffrey and Susan about 15 years ago and uh, did some really wonderful classwork and monologues with them. And then about 12 years ago, I came out as a trans woman and began my transition. And in, the, in that process, it was a very different world then. Um, one of the things I had to accept before I transitioned was that I would never act again. I had first been on stage at six months old. It had been a constant part of my life, a, a ongoing source of, of joy and satisfaction and engagement and challenge and community. And I had to accept that that part of my life was over in order to to be my true self, or so I thought. Um, I lived in Andersonville at the time and would run into Jeffrey occasionally. And at a certain point, he just looked at me with that sly, mischievous smile we all know and said, it's time. It's time for you to come back to class. It's time for you to do female monologues. At that time, I didn't know that was possible. I hadn't even dared dream of that possibility. There was no one like me in the field. There was no path forward for trans artists. I didn't think I could be an actor at all, much less do female roles, much less do Shakespeare. What I didn't know when Jeffrey first told me that is that he had played a trans woman, played Zoe on All My Children. And like everything Jeffrey did, he brought his full curiosity and care and compassion and empathy and playfulness and dignity and respect and intelligence to that part. And in the process, got to know trans issues and trans people and saw us in a way that very few people were capable of seeing us at that time. And he looked at me that way. And with all of that knowledge, he was able to coax me confidently, assuredly, with a gentle hand back into the classroom. And then we talked at length about trans issues and what it meant to be a trans woman and how it could be an additive part of my artistic experience rather than an obstacle, which is something I wouldn't have dared to, to hope for prior to Jeffrey. He changed my life and because of what he and Susan woke up in that classroom for me when I started doing female monologues, took me down a path in which I am now one of the very first trans people to make a full-time living in Hollywood. And I have created so much space for dozens of other people who are coming into this industry, trans actors and directors and creatives behind me and alongside of me who are changing the entire world for trans people. And it's all because of Jeffrey. It's all because he took that part and he brought the fullness of himself to it. And then he saw that in me and he brought me back into the work. It's because of Jeffrey. I cannot conceive of the life that I had, this full, amazing life that I have, had it not been for Jeffrey. <laughs> oh, Jeffrey, I hope in some way, shape or form, you are in that room and hearing today our stories and understanding the impact you had on us and that you can rest or go on satisfied knowing that you really made a difference here and um for all of us left behind for his family for his friends for susan for all of us who studied with him if we can bring a fraction of what Jeffrey brought to everything he did, to every role he played, a, a fraction of his humanity, the way that he saw every part with such care and curiosity and empathy and compassion, and all those qualities we know so well. If we can bring a fraction of that 
to our art, to our friendships, to our community, to the world. The world will be a better place because of it, and it will be because of Jeffrey. He was a genuine light in this world, and I will be forever grateful that I got to stand in that light, even for a moment of time. Thank you. Jen reached out to me, you know, about 36 hours after the news broke and said, I have to be a part of this. And I'm just so grateful to her for sharing that story. It's so important. And now, oh, another clip. You know, it's kind of fun hearing from people around the country. And um, this next clip is a tribute. Another person who wanted to be here very much and could not. Um, but uh, I think you're all familiar with Jeffrey. did a few wonderful shows at Yale Repertory, uh, Richard the Third, uh, the Second, sorry, and Cymbeline, uh, clips from which you're going to see later. Um, and his director was a wonderful woman who was the head of acting at Yale. She's now the head of acting at Juilliard. Here's the tribute from Evan Yanoulis. Hello, everyone. I'm Evan Yanoulis, and I'm so sorry I can't be with you in person today. But I met Juilliard, where Jeffrey spent so many of his formative years. Um, I'm grateful to be able to be a part of this celebration of Jeffrey's beautiful life. I first met him in 2007. I was casting the role of Richard II uh, for a production at Yale Repertory Theater. And Jeffrey couldn't come into audition because he was playing Hamlet at the Shakespeare Theater with Michael Kahn. So I said, well, I'll just get on a train and go uh, see his Hamlet. So my son was eight at the time, and we both got up at five o'clock in the morning and got on the train and went down to Washington and got in our seats. And uh, Jeffrey entered, and uh, in a few moments, he said his first line, a little more than kin and less than kind. And my son leaned over to me and said, uh, do you think he can do it? And I thought, well, we're going to stay for the next three and a half hours to see, but I pretty much think he can definitely do it. And of course, he could. He made a beautiful Richard II, um, powerful and uh, willful, and it was a joy to work with him. We started our collaboration across the table from each other, just the two of us. He invited me, which I thought was such a typically generous thing of Jeffrey to do, to go through the script and we read through every page and talked about this moment or that moment, uh, this weirdness of metricality. Um, and so we already had a partnership when we went into the rehearsal room. He came thoroughly prepared, of course, two thirds off book and he was a wonderful role model for the professional company and also for the students who were in the cast. We worked together again on Cymbeline at Yale. He played Yakimo. And I tell my students that I really understood finally what was meant by honoring the first line and also the sense of the text. Uh, finally, I want to talk to his students because he loved you so much. When he was at Yale during the run of Cymbeline, I'd see him in the mornings at Book Trader, the coffee shop across the street, looking for material for you. And uh, our last meeting was in Chicago when I was there for the audition tour. We went out to dinner and Jeffrey talked about you, the work you were doing together, how excited he was um, at your dedication and your work. And I just hope that you will keep him alive in you and remember his artistry as I do so fondly. Thank you for letting me share a little bit of my love of Jeffrey Carlson. Uh, our final tribute tonight will come from a dear Dear friend of mine, personally, where are you? Sitting back. Oh! <laughs> I need to stand up for a second. <laughs> I understand. 
Yeah, get that blood going in those legs. Hope your legs hold you up while you're up here. Come on up, Alex. This is Alex Burns, everybody. <laughs> Alex and I met doing Chicago theater at Chicago Shakespeare Theater. Alex was the great, late Michael Bogdanov's assistant director on The Winter's Tale. Um, yeah, Michael Bogdanov, RSC, you know. Um, yeah. And we all hated Alex because he was the one giving uh, Michael's notes and come back with the strips of paper. And we'd all think we were brilliant. And then Alex would just kind of put his head down and go, I'm sorry, here's, here's your notes. Because <laughs> Michael Bogdanov was a son of a bitch. <laughs> brilliant. Um, uh, when Jeffrey and I had the honor of playing Gertrude and Hamlet together at the Shakespeare Theater in DC, in the original production, Alex was Michael Kahn's uh, assistant director, and then was given the assignment of basically directing the remount, which Jeffrey and I were a part of. And so you and I got to reconnect at that time, and it was incredibly amazing, that production and that collaboration. And um, I'm sure Alex will share this with you all, But Alex had hired, he's the artistic director of the Quintessence Classical Theater Company in Philadelphia. He's in tech right now and directing two, a two show rep. Flew in today. I don't know, when are you leaving? Tonight? Okay. Um, and uh, he had cast Jeffrey. You gonna talk about that? You gonna talk about that? Sure. Would you? <laughs> Just about the parts you gave him? Yeah, I love that. Um, in a two show rep. That's right, fucking three show rep. <laughs> um, that Jeffrey was very excited about doing. And that was 2019. And they had rehearsed for how many months? Six months? Oh, no, I wish. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Eight weeks. And then COVID hit. <clears throat> and the, the productions never happen. Um, it is my honor and pleasure to welcome my very good friend, and Al Jeffrey loved Alex so much, so please welcome Alex Burns. Thank you so much. Um, I'm truly honored to be here. I'm humbled to speak after so many incredible people. Um, I'm, I'm standing here not on, only on the shoulders of Michael Bogdanov, but also Michael Kahn, who you saw in the video, who was another one of my mentors uh, as a director. Um, uh, when Susan asked me, Susie asked me to come and speak, I was overwhelmed at the thought of trying to put together so many feelings and thoughts about Jeffrey. Um, I'll go back to, uh, I'm having this white wine because this was when I drank so much with Jeffrey Carlson. <laughs> and I don't drink white wine with anybody else, so I'm, I'm having a little reunion myself, so I'm gonna take a sip. Yeah! Woo! To Jeffrey. Um, I first saw Jeffrey Carlson, or I first met Jeffrey Carlson in, in, I think it was 2002, when he was doing The Goat or Who is Sylvia on Broadway, and I was a precocious young queer college student who's gonna take over Broadway. <laughs> And I went to see this production of the new Edward Albee play, and there was Jeffrey Carlson on stage with Philip Pullman and Mercedes Rule, and uh, they literally almost killed each other on stage every night, and that was before the pottery started smashing. <laughs> and I hated Jeffrey's performance. I was so mad at him. I was like, I'm a proud young queer person, and who the hell is this kid up there, you know, being all gay and like ticky and like smashing things and screaming and yelling? And I was like, this isn't a good representation for the gay community. And I was so mad. And I was like, this is like every queer young person out there with all this pain and frustration. This is not what we need. And Alex, I'm going to keep spilling. No, the line is just. It's, it's my. It's my uh, Gift. Yeah, like so, uh, <laughs> to Jeffrey. Um, but, uh, but I never ever could forget. I literally can close my eyes and remember almost every moment of that performance. Jump forward six years later, I'm the assistant director, resident assistant director at the Shakespeare Theater under Michael Kahn, and Michael has hired Jeffrey to play Hamlet. 
And Jeffrey comes in for a couple of meetings, similar to what you heard about, and is, and is this wild electric ball of energy that cannot sit still on a couch. Like, he's literally doing this the whole time. Like, on the couch. Like, fit, twitching, ticking. And I was like, Michael, what are you doing? Like, and it's not a cut production. It's three and a half hours long. I was like, this is going to be a disaster. So my role as the assistant director was not just to be there for rehearsals, but also to protect and facilitate the star actors that are in these shows at the Shakespeare Theater. So I was the person that would go out drinking with Jeffrey every night <laughs> and making sure that he was going to be at rehearsal the next morning. And we got into the beginning of what was ultimately a not long enough, but almost decade long conversation, or no more than that, we got over a decade, about Shakespeare and our love of this work. And the thing that always drove me crazy about Jeffrey is that he would always surprise everybody in the room. And he had this gift of being able to literally change the temperature in a theater. And you'd just be like, how the fuck did you do that? Where did that come from? And he somehow also created this like bath of energy in which you got invited to enter. And even if it was something that was as horrifying as the existential crisis of a son wanting to murder his father, or it was the idea of self-harm, he literally somehow created that, not as something he was telling you about, but something that he was experiencing and sharing with you. And to me, that's the greatest gift of an actor. And it's a, it's, a, it's a divine gift. Michael described him as a demigod. And to me, I met him, and he was truly a god to me. Um, and we had the most incredible eight weeks working on three plays in Philadelphia. He was playing uh, Oberon and uh, Titania in Midsummer. He was playing Clarion the Servant in Calderon's Life is a Dream. And he was playing Caligula in Camus Caligula. And we were, we had just gotten halfway through tech of Midsummer, and we got the word from the governor of the state of Pennsylvania that we were probably gonna have to put things on hold for a week. And then we got through the first run through of Life is a Dream, and we got word that we were probably gonna have to put things on hold for two weeks. And then right as we were finishing our final day of tech on Midsummer, we got a phone call saying that everything was gonna be shutting down for a month. And we brought the cast together and we said, it's gonna be on hold for a month, we'll all be back in a month. Keep working on your lines. <laughs> the set is gonna be here, the costume is gonna be here. We're gonna do this. And I said, what I'd really like to do is I'd like to just do a run through of Caligula because that was the third play in the rep. And you know, I can't keep you here because the gov governor just shut the state down <laughs> due to COVID. But I'd really like to do this. And we all worked through the show together. Um, and it's sort of unfair to tell an apocryphal tale like this, especially in this situation, but it was one of the most extraordinary performances I've ever had the gift of watching and being part of. And Jeffrey's madness as Caligula was so beautiful that it made you kind of understand the madness that we all live through and the chaos that exists in the world in a way that I think only theater can do and only great work from great artists, specifically actors, can do. And that was, to me, Jeffrey's genius. And Jeffrey opened up a universe to me. He always made me feel like I was part of a continuum of artists that connected back thousands of years, that he somehow found a portal to and opened the door for me to follow through after him and all of these other people. And that's why I love theater, and that's why I'm in the theater. And I hope to do the same for other artists and my only other sadness that I just want to express, and I know this is a celebration, is that theater has always been a family and a community. And it's always been a place for the misfits and the weirdos and the geniuses. And it, I just feel like we failed Jeffrey Carlson as a community. And you know, there's not much we can do about it now, but I want to make sure that when there are future other Jeffrey Carlsons, that we find a way of opening up opportunities and supporting and caring for those people so we don't lose any more of them. Because I think we as theater artists are the most precious commodity that humanity has to offer. We are so selfless, we burn so bright, and it's so dangerous, but we have to let it keep burning. 
So that's my goal as an artistic director, to keep making sure that I can keep finding and supporting the Jeffrey Carlsons of the world. There are not many of them. And all the other people that look up to the Jeffrey Carlsons and reach to them and join them and support them on stage because they are as equally as important. So I'm so honored to be here. Thank you so much. And um, I hope, can we all raise a glass to Jeffrey? Because <laughs> I had so much fun with Jeffrey Carlson. <laughs> They have, none of that fun's been in any of the photos, but it was a lot of fun. So to Jeffrey Carlson. Thanks to Alex, there will be no dancing to conclude our ceremony today. No floor show. in preparing for this evening. Jeffrey's been so present. He's been in my damn dreams every night, alive and well and bossy and a pain in the ass. <laughs> going through his photos, going through his videos, hearing from all of you who loved him. And uh, the world is, will be dimmer. We all know that. It's real important that we all take deep breaths, full of gratitude for having known him. Back to 2006. I met Jeffrey. I met Jeffrey in rehearsal at Chicago Shakespeare Theater for a glorious production of Henry IV, parts one and two, all six hours of theater. He was brought in from New York to play Prince Hal. Um, we had a 30 equity member cast in that show, which is come on, unheard of. Why? Because our little production was going to be transferred across the pond to the Royal Shakespeare Company in Stratford upon Avon, and we were going to be the first American company to set foot on the RSC stage and do our six hours of theater. Right? So we're at the first read-through. I know everybody around the table except the two New York actors, and Jeffrey walks in, and I'm like, oh, that cute blonde, he must be the Hal, you know. <laughs> and um, <sighs> we always have a little bit of resentment for those out of town. Never mind. <laughs> no, we didn't. Um, couldn't find him in Chicago. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> so true. Okay, but here's the big shebang. I had been teaching at Chicago uh, Shakes for a few years uh, by then, and I, I coached Prince Hal monologues. And uh, Jeffrey opened his mouth for the very first scene. In pros, with false staff. You know, they're waking up hungover, and talking about the tide and a bunch of shit. And, uh, <laughs> and I was already at the table. He was memorized, and he, he was making amazing, brilliant choices. Then he did I Know You All, the first house first, first monologue, soliloquy, uh, which you're going to see. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Evan Minimalist. And, uh, so no, not yet. <laughs> sorry. Can we start something? No, we're not there yet, Darnell. Almost. We're almost there. But you can keep this up for now. Did I not know it was there? Go ahead. Put it back up. It's fine. <laughs> no, not this one. We need to go back. <laughs> go back one. No. Go back one. One more, back one more. Oh. Yeah, okay, I'll get to that in a second. Anyway, I, um, I, when Jeremy finished that uh, soliloquy, I, he did 
didn't know me from Adam. I was across, looking at him across the table going. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and through the whole two and a half hour table read, I was a fan. I'd never heard anyone own the language the way Jeffrey did, and I'd never experienced an actor ever who was more generous with it. You all know that this is the gift he gave you as a teacher, right? The generosity, the caring, the wanting to take the audience with you. So on the break, after nodding at him for two and a half hours, I <laughs> bounded up to him and uh, uh, he said, who, who are you? And I said, who are you? And he said, I'm Jeffrey. <laughs> and I said, are you British? And he said, no, I'm just affected. <laughs> and I said, well, my name is Susan. I teach here, and we need to be friends. And the rest, as they say, is history. <laughs> this is us outside the swan once we went across the pond to the Royal Shakespeare Company. So that's the ensemble. There's, there's Jeffrey, there's me. There's a bunch of people you might know. And does anybody know who this is? It's Jesse Mueller, the huge Broadway star, who next to me was playing a tavern wench in this production. It's totally Jesse Mueller, yeah. Um, next shot, please, Darnell. This is us inside this one. Now, I want to let you know that among this 30 equity member cast of Chicago veterans, there were a lot of jaded and cynical people. <laughs> but what I love about this photo is the complete joy on everyone's face because we all felt like we had gone to Shakespeare Disneyland on a platter. <laughs> Next shot, please. Curtain call, RSC. Find Jesse Mueller. <laughs> Me? Okay, I'm right, just as always. And again, and Jeffrey, uh, nobody wore a crown like Jeffrey Carlson. Let's just say that. Um, I am very privileged to share with, share with you uh, material that's very difficult to get. And I would like to thank Dan Hess, company manager, and Bob Mason, casting director at Chicago Shakespeare Theater, for allowing you all the privilege of seeing Jeffrey's Prince Hal performance in the form of two beautiful pieces. So I'll be back after. You're not going to believe what you see. I know you all and will a while uphold the unyoked humor of your idleness. Yet here in Will I imitate the sun who doth permit the base contagious clouds to smother up his beauty from the world that when he please again to be himself, being wanted, he may be more wondered at by breaking through the foul and ugly mists of vapors that did seem to strangle him. If all the year we're playing holidays, to sport would be as tedious as to work. But when they seldom come, they wished for come. <laughs> and nothing pleases but rare accidents. So when this loose behavior I throw off and pay the debt, I never promise it. <clears throat> By how much better than my word I am. By so much shall I falsify men's hopes and like bright metal on the sullen ground, my reformation, glittering o'er my fault, shall show more goodly and attract more eyes than that which hath no foil to set it off. I'll so offend, to make offense a skill, redeeming time when men think least I will. Chief Justice. 
Speak to that vain man. Have you your wits? Know you what did you speak? My king, my love, I speak to thee in my heart. I know thee not, old man. Fall to thy prayers. How ill white hairs become a fool and jester. I have long dreamed of such a kind of man, so surfeit swelled, so old, and so profane. But being awake, I do despise my dream. <coughs> Make less thy body hence, and more thy grace. Leave gormandizing. Know the grave doth gape for thee thrice wider than for other men. Who cry not to me with the fool-born jest. Presume not that I am the thing I was. For heaven doth know, so shall the world perceive, that I have turned away my former self. So will I those that kept me company. When thou dost hear I am as I have been, approach me, and thou shalt be as thou wast, the tutor and feeder of my rights. Till then, I banish thee, on pain of death, as I have done the rest of my misleaders, and not to come near our person by ten mile. For competence of life I will allow thee, that lack of means enforce you not to evil. And as we hear you do reform yourself, we will, according to your strength and qualities, give you advancement. Be at your charge, my lord, to see performed the tenor of our word. Set on. Come on! So, when we came back, so when we were at the RIC, um, Jeffrey and I taught a class together over there. I don't know, it was weird. The RSC asked, he was the Broadway guy and I was the teacher from Chicago Shakes and they said, can you guys teach a class? And we did to some high school students. We taught them dirty bits from Shakespeare to keep them interested. <laughs> <laughs> we never taught together. I'd never taught with anybody before, but the extraordinary thing, <laughs> this is who we became, by the way. Don't you love this? <laughs> um, in that two hours, I'd be watching one of the students work language and then a note would occur to me and then it would come out of freaking Jeffrey's mouth. And then he had the same experience where he was formulating a note and then it would come out of my mouth. And when we were done, we walked across the, uh, the bridge of the Avon River with the swans <laughs> swimming underneath us. <laughs> Ridiculous. And I said, that was really something. He said, it really was. I said, maybe we should consider doing more of that. And we did. With all of you. What a joy. What a privilege. I don't want to go into detail about, about what happened in the classroom. Most of you were there and no. We were so lucky to have experienced him and to have known him, and to have shared his passion and his commitment and his talent. And uh, I had the unfortunate, ah, uh, God. Um, there was a circle of us that found out very early on the morning that Jeffrey uh, passed. And uh, we just kind of kept it to ourselves because none of us could process the family very much so included. And then I had the, um, I don't want to call it a privilege, but it was a horrible task of sharing the news on Facebook and just letting you all know that we have lost him. And the result of that post <laughs> was everybody in the world messaging me on Facebook who I'd never met in my life fans from all my children, national press, I'm sure you all saw all that. Um, but the most incredible thing about that thread was the huge amount of responses from all of you and the beautiful way with which you articulated the way Jeffrey changed your lives. Uh, we have collected, Kate, are we gonna uh, make that slideshow accessible as part of our yeah. video gift? Um, great. Uh, 
And we were, I was scrolling through, and Beth, Beth and I were unfortunately talking about the Long Beach, Long Beach celebration getting going. And um, there was one tribute that I just was like, oh, I think this one tribute kind of encapsulates everything that everyone has chimed in saying about Jeffrey. And so I reached out to our student, Brendan Mulhern, um, and asked him if he would just record it just for fun, because I think he speaks for everybody in this room in terms of the thrill of being in the classroom for him. So please enjoy this recording of Brendan Mulhern. I'm gonna stay right here for this. Jeffrey, you changed my life. Thousands of actors can say the same thing, but I will speak for myself. I consider myself wholly blessed to have had the amazing fortune to experience your light, your force. I was fully seen by you, fully celebrated by you. I was emboldened by you. I am an actor because of you. To be taught by Jeffrey was to be enveloped in the purest endeavor to find the truth. He and Susan had exacting standards of excellence, but they never tried to break you as so many acting teachers do. They simply commanded that you dig and scrape and claw to be fully yourself because the only way for theater to work is if you bring your truth and they were with you every step of the way. This was a man who trained at Juilliard studied under legends, performed with legends, played all the great roles in all the great houses, a bona fide Broadway star and literally a trailblazing TV actor, teaching Shakespeare in an Andersonville living room with the same sweat-letting passion as he did playing Hamlet. And he never once, he would never dare say, this is how I did it, or this is how you should do it. Rather, he would sit on the floor blonde mop in his eyes, baseball hat pulled low, and guide you through a hypnotic and increasingly fervent dance with the text. With a foul traitor's name. With a foul traitor's... A foul what? With a foul traitor's... With a foul traitor's name. What about it? With a foul traitor's name, stuff I thy throat. And as I found the fury and the betrayal and the passion and the ego within me, he saw me, reeled with me, danced with me, mouthed the words of speeches he heard a thousand times with me. Until finally, after six grueling and exhilarating weeks, I nailed it and he jumped up with me. And with a cheeky smile, embraced me in a bear hug and simply said in his quiet breathy, almost solemn, Barry Tenor. Yes, that's it. <laughs> and I felt like I could do anything. I could go on. For a shy kid who has never had much confidence, Jeffrey made me feel like a star. He was a natural, in the purest sense of the word, actor, and a natural teacher, a rare, precious, and mighty gift. Jeffrey, I hope beyond hope that you are at peace. I hope you know just how brightly you shine within each of us who ever sat in that living room and dared to be brave. I hope you know that I will try my damnedest, as you always encouraged us to just try our damnedest, to teach the way you taught, to act the way you taught. With love, kindness, and courage. There is a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. If it be now, it is not to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. The readiness is all. Since no man of aught he leaves knows, what is it to leave betimes? Let be. Oops, the dam broke. <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you so much.
so much for being here. Please stay. Please, we don't have a cleanup crew. If you have plates or cups or anything, make sure you throw them away and tip those bartenders and <laughs> stick around and lots of hugs and wonderful stuff. Oh, God. Oh, sorry. I said nine o'clock, is it nine? That's why, is it nine? Yeah, I said I'll wait till nine. <laughs> I want to thank the Den Theater for donating their space and their staff. All the equipment, all the technicians. So thank you, Ryan, Adeline, Nick, and Darnell. I want to thank Steve McDonough, one of our former students who also happens to own Hardy Boys Catering. Uh, <laughs> there is so much food out there. Uh, find like garbage bags that you can fill on your way out the door tonight. I think they're going to bring containers. There's so much food. Take it home um, or eat it and drink. Um, I very much want to thank Kate McDuffie. Uh, okay. Kate can't come up here with me right now. Um, because, you know, we're doing the non-show. And um, it was easy. <laughs> no moving pieces or anything like that. She did all the technical stuff. and kept it all sane and organized. Um, you will see a beautiful slideshow coming up that I would very much like to thank Cheryl Mitchell for, uh, and also uh, Tyler Sanders and Devin Carson. Devin, where are you? Where? I love you. Also, um, this evening is being filmed. We didn't want to do a live Zoom. That doesn't always work real well. So our student, Bailey, would you mind please standing up? Darnell, can I have a little bit of house light? Um, is a cinematographer and director. <laughs> filming this evening, so you will all have it for posterity. Um, and also the people around the country who couldn't make it. Um, I want to thank the folks I'm calling the Celebration Singers. Because <laughs> it has a ring to it, right? Um, Sarah Cushman, Tom Jansen, Alexandra James, Patty Mullaney. Where's Patty? Oh, hi. You want to wing this? OK. Um, Mary McCormick. Uh, Kate McDuffie, Reed O'Connell, and Mary Regalado. I need you backstage now, singers, please. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm not going to, I can't do any more names. I honestly, my legs can't hold me up anymore. Everyone that contributed to this, I hope you guys had a heartfelt, appreciative, evening and it's been said many times tonight you know our um, our Jeffrey is inside all of us he's inside all of us you all must carry him in your hearts Remember his words, remember his teaching, remember his dedication, remember how much he loved you and take him into your futures with you. He won't be forgotten, who could forget him? But nobody's gonna know about him unless you keep talking about him. Real important, I'm doing it in my current classes. I will never, ever not quote him, not honor him, Please take him forward with you. And also, I know Jeffrey would want this too. You know, our beloved 400-year-old white guy playwright is not terribly popular right now, which is insane. 
because there's a generation of people who believe he should be dismissed. I don't, I am not in that club. None of you are either. So as you take Shakespeare forward, take Jeffrey forward too. God damn it. Okay. Is there something more? I don't think so. Yeah, thanks Susan. Yeah. <laughs> Mommy's always here, you guys, you know that. <laughs> um, there are, I uh, was fortunate enough to reach out to several theaters and uh, who dropped everything and immediately sent photos of Jeffrey and productions. And we have built a beautiful slideshow tribute to share with all of you of his glorious moments on stage. As much as he loved teaching y'all, I know, there's no doubt in my mind, these closing images are what you need to carry forward in your hearts. He would want you to remember him in his glory. And so the following slideshow is a tribute to the glory of Jeffrey Carlson. Oh. 